Even a caveman can do it, part two, solving systems of equations. Recently, I introduced my caveman friend Og to my viewership, and I have to tell you that his story has struck a chord with many eager for his success. Most of the emails I have received have been encouraging, except one, and this, is, this video addresses Kim's message. She writes, G-Dog, you big fat show-off, teaching this caveman, did you know that you were teaching him using graphing paper, which wasn't even invented before the 1600s? Let's see him do it without graph paper. I don't mind you using the calculator to check, but if he's really a caveman, as you claim, he needs to do it with caveman technology. Let's see you do this one, hot shot. Sincerely, Kim. Aside from the big fat description, which I'm sure is just for dramatic effect since I've lost about 40 pounds over the last five years, Kim does make some excellent points. The first thing I have to agree with, though reluctantly, is the charge of being a show-off. I think that having over 80 videos out there in a little over a year states her case pretty well. And most importantly, she is correct that the technology for graphing was invented in the early 1600s by Monsieur René Descartes. So during this video, Og will not even use graphing paper to solve systems of equations. The only post-1600s technology we will use is the calculator, and that will be for checking purposes only. We're going to start with this system of equations, 7x minus 9y equals negative 57, and negative 7x plus 10y equals 68. Will Og be up to the challenge? The first thing he notices is that the first equation with the 7x and the second equation with the negative 7x immediately below. Og knows that he can solve for two equations with two unknowns if he can break it down to one equation with one unknown. He decides that he can add the two equations together and eliminate the x variable. 7x's minus 7x's equals 0 and therefore cancel. He brings down everything else and has on the left negative 9y plus 10y and on the right side negative 57 plus 68. Combining like terms, he has y equals 11. Now he knows what y is, he can bring down one of the equations and substitute 11 for y. So he brings down negative 7x plus 10y equals 68, replacing y with 11. So he has negative 7x plus 10 times 11 equals 68. Simplifying, we have negative 7x plus 110 equals 68. He moves the 110 to the right, and that makes it negative 110 on, on the right side. Simplifying, he has negative 7x equals negative 42. Dividing both sides by negative 7, he finds that x equals 6. He makes note of the coordinates, 6, 11. We'll start our check of Og's work by storing 6 for x and 11 for y in our graphing calculator. That would be 6 storage x, enter, 11 storage y, enter. We now enter the left side of the first equation, which is 7x minus 9y. We see that it equals negative 57, just like our original first equation. Check. Now we enter the left side of the other equation, negative 7x plus 10y, and we see that it equals 68, just like our first equation. Check. Kim, I hope you're watching this. Og is one for one using pre-1600s technology. Let's try this system. We have 2x plus 7y equals 5, and 2x plus 3y equals 9. This one's not set up so neatly where we can add both equations together, so he'll have a little challenge. But Og has an idea. He can cancel the x's by subtracting the bottom equation from the top equation. So 2x minus 2x equals 0. 7y minus 3y equals 4y, and 5 minus 9 equals negative 4. Therefore, y equals negative 4 divided by 4, or y equals negative 1. Now he can substitute negative 1 for y in one of the original equations. Let's try that, the first one this time. So he has 2x plus 7 times negative 1 equals 5. We're left with 2x minus 7 equals 5. He gets rid of the negative 7 by making it plus 7 on the right side. So he has 2x equals 12. So he ends up with x equals 12 divided by 2, or that would be x equals 6. Og writes down his solution of 6 
comma, negative 1. We start our check by storing 6 for x and negative 1 for y. We enter the left side of the first equation, 2x plus 7y, and we see that since the answer is 5, it works out. Check. We now enter the left side of the second equation, 2x plus 3y. We see that both expressions equal 9, so it works. Check. 6 comma negative 1 is a solution to the system of equations. Kim, wherever you are, he did it again. We'll try another one. This one looks a lot tougher. It's negative 6x plus 12y equals 120 and 5x minus 6y equals negative 48. He doesn't see anything that can cancel by adding or subtracting here. But he does notice that negative 6 is a negative multiple of 12. Or 12 is a negative multiple of negative 6, rather. He just applies the distributive property by distributing 2 to everything inside the parentheses of the second equation. If he multiplies the second equation by 2, he'll be able to make it work. The second equation has been changed to 10x minus 12y equals negative 96. It is important to observe that since he multiplied the whole equation, both sides of the equation, by 2, he hasn't changed what the equation really is, but only the form of the equation to make it easier to work with. Now Og can add the top and bottom equations together. He is left with 4x equals 24. In the first two equations, Og started by solving for y after eliminating x. In this one, it was more convenient for him to eliminate y, which solved for x first. If there's one thing Og has learned, it's the importance of being flexible and deciding what to do. He keeps an active and open Cro-Magnon mind. So x is 24 divided by 4, which equals 6. He can now work on solving for y by substituting 6 back for x in the first equation. So he has negative 6 times 6 plus 12y equals 120. He gets rid of the negative 36 by making it positive 36 on the right side. So he ends up with 12y equals 156. So y is 156 divided by 12, or 13. He writes down the coordinates at 6, 13. We start our check of Og's work by storing 6 for x and 13 for y in our calculator. We enter the left side of the first equation, negative 6x plus 12y. We get 120. Check. Now he enters the left half of the second equation. Check it out. It's important to use the original equation, the one before he multiplied it by 2. So that would be 5x minus 6y. And he gets negative 48. Check. Og got it right yet again, this time with an even harder problem. We have time for one more system to solve. We have 8x minus 2y equals 58, and 6x minus 2y equals 40. You try it. Stop the video. See if you can solve the system without using a calculator or graph paper. Then restart the video to see if you matched Og's solution. The first thing Og did was multiply the second equation by negative 1. This changed all the signs of that second equation, so now he has negative 6x plus 2y equals negative 40. Then he added both the equations together, negative 2y plus 2y cancel. He's left with 2x equals 18. Dividing 18 by 2, he has x equals 9. Next, he substituted 9 for x in the second equation. So he has 8 times 9 minus 2x equals 58. He was left with 72 minus 2y equals 58. He gets rid of the 72 on the left by making it minus 72 on the right. So negative 2y equals 58 minus 72 equals negative 14. Finally, he divides both sides by negative 2 and gets y equals 7. He writes down his solution, the coordinates 9, 7. We check Og by storing 9 for x and 7 for y. We enter the left side of the first equation, 6x, 8x minus 2y. That equals 58. Check. Now we enter the left side of the second equation to check. Again, it has to be the original equation. 6x minus 2y, and that equals 40. Check, Kim. Thanks for the challenge. You correctly taught us about the history of algebra as well as giving Og a chance to really show what he knows and can do.
This has been Even a Caveman Can Do It Part 2, Solving Systems of Equations. Thanks for viewing.